Hey guys, it's time for our first science experiment. Give me something new. I want it back through and through. As you will see, we can do science with some of the basic things in your kitchen, in your house, maybe even in your garage. So the first activity we're going to do is build a mass scale. Okay, so this is a way for us to measure mass. As you know, mass is the total amount of matter in something. So mass or matter is measured in grams. Now originally, scientists came up with the measurement unit of grams by taking one cubic centimeter of water and finding out how many particles were in it. Now, we can measure anything against that amount. We can say that a single gram is equal to a paper clip or it's equal to a push pin because the same amount of particles are in both of those. Remember, those particles are made of atoms. Atoms linked together are molecules. So water molecules are being compared to every other piece of physical matter on earth, whether air, liquid, or solid, in order to find out how much matter is in something. So let's go ahead and build our own mass scale today. We're going to start with a hanger. You need to hang that up on a place that's free on both sides, so it's free to move. Then we're going to take two clothespins or any kind of uh, fastener, but it has to be equal on both sides, and you're going to connect it with a silo cup. Now, I prefer a silo cup because if it falls, it's not going to break, and they're relatively light. Okay? Now, then you take your push pins or your paper clips, and I'm gonna start with about 30 of those, which I've already counted out here. And I put them on one side. Now we're using gravity as a helpful, a helpful indicator, because we know that gravity pulls down when there's more particles in something. It pulls down more on whatever there's more matter. But what we're truly measuring this matter by is another another uh, cup of matter. These two together are going to show us which one has more matter. Now remember, there's about 30 grams or 30 push pins in this right cup, and that's why the hanger is off kilter. So let's see from these Legos which one equals 30 grams. I'll start with this Lego. Well, we know because the hanger moved down on the left side, that this Lego is actually too heavy. Or I should say it has too much matter in it. So let's try this, this is lighter. It's a little too light. Because now it's higher. And finally, in the middle, And we arrive at our 30 grams. So both sides are equal once it stops moving. And you can now tell that a single Lego block has about 30 grams of matter in it. Now you can use anything to compare how much matter is in something. And then you know that this amount of particles is greater or less than a certain amount of grams. So I hope you were able to make your scale at home and on to the next activity. On to our next activity. For this activity, you will probably need an adult. So I recommend waiting for your mom or your dad to get home before you begin. However, you can watch mine and I believe that you will learn from this. So I'm starting with a cup of ice as well as a stove top. So my first move is to pour the cup of ice into an empty pot. Then I will turn on the stove on high. Then we wait.
much as me watching the solid form of water turn into the liquid form of water, which then in turn turn it into water vapor, also known as the air form of water. This was an experiment that showed that some substances can be turned into many forms, and water can also be turned into the plasma form. All right, on to the next activity. Welcome to our next activity. In this activity, I will be showing you that even though something is a liquid and it is more free flowing, there are denser liquids or, and less dense liquids, meaning that some liquids have more particles in it than others. Where our first substance is water, the second is syrup, and the third is oil. You will need a measuring cup. In this case, I have a one third cup. I also have a clear glass. You just need at least one side where you can see all three liquids. And we will start by pouring the syrup into the measuring cup. It doesn't really matter if it's exact. And then the glass. Next. I'll pour the oil. Well, at first it looks pretty mixed. Well, let's see what happens by the end. And finally, the water. Now I use these substances because they all have a different color. Now as the dust settles, you will see that the substances have separated into three distinct layers. The syrup is the most dense, which is why it moved to the bottom. Now if you think about it, anything that's more dense, that has more particles in it, will weigh more on Earth because of the force of gravity. The water is obviously has a middle density between the two. This one is balancing right between the oil and the syrup. And finally, we have the oil, which is less dense, meaning that there are less particles packed into the same amount of space. Now matter is anything that takes up space, otherwise known as volume. And you can see here that these liquids take up space and they have more or less dense particles in them. Okay, I have one more thing for this. Would like to experiment not only with liquid density, but with solid density. So first, I'm going to take a penny. Now, if I had the same amount of liquid in this amount of space that the penny takes up, I can find out which one is more dense. And so that's what we're gonna do. I'm going to drop this in here and see if it sinks or if it floats. If it sinks, it means that it's more dense than all three of the liquids. Um, if it floats, it means it's less dense. And if it goes somewhere in between, then it's somewhere in between. So let's see. That obviously sank right away into the syrup. And so the penny is decidedly more dense. Now let's take this styrofoam and see what happens. Well, styrofoam, there are way less particles in styrofoam. They are spread farther apart in the same amount of space. And so the styrofoam floats. And finally, this tomato. This tomato is just about as dense as the water that it's in, which makes sense since tomato is mostly made of water. As you can see, you can find different densities of different matter just by comparing the mass of something to the mass of something else. 